I hate videos. Now you may be wondering, if I hate videos, what the heck am I doing here? Happy Friday, everyone. Um, I know it is Good Friday, so I just want to wish everybody that's celebrating a Good Friday, Happy Good Friday, and Happy Easter. Um, we know what the reason for the season is. And if you're celebrating, know this. You were deemed worthy. If we haven't met yet, my name is Inga van Roy and I am recognized as a connection catalyst. What that means is I help entrepreneurs and manufacturers develop a strategy so that they can stand out and connect with the ideal community. I'm so excited to be able to bring you this episode, a very special episode, because um we're going to be talking to Reggie Waterman, uh, somebody that I've been connected to for a while on LinkedIn. Um, he, is, he was based in Toronto. He's made a special move outside, but he's currently visiting back here. And I thought I would grab him just so that we can have a little conversation and learn a bit from him. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to our amazing sponsors at Africa Radio, a South African online radio station that I am now in partnership with. And if you haven't seen it, um, I am bringing you a segment on radio every Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m. on this platform. And we also go live when I interview my guest um, in the middle hour. So the initial half hour is only on radio and the the last half hour is also only on radio, but the, the rest of it is live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube as well. Thank you to Africa Up Radio for their amazing support and sponsorship. We appreciate you. If you watched my introduction video, you will have seen a word that is not very well known in the Western world, and that word is Ubuntu. So, some of you may be wondering, what does Ubuntu mean? Well, Ubuntu is an ancient African word. It means humanity to others. It is often described as reminding us that I am because we are. The reason why I believe wholeheartedly in this specific word and principle is because the person who you see in front of you today would not be here were it not for the people that I've met in my life, as well as the experiences that I've had. So without further ado, let's bring on my amazing guest, Reggie Waterman. Ingor. Good morning. How are you? Good morning and ben buenos dias. See, I'm learning <laughs> Espanol. Oh my gosh. You've lost me. I, uh, I am fully bilingual, but not in Spanish. <laughs> no, I'm not bilingual either. <laughs> you're, bilingual. you're learning. You're learning. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Um, thank you for being here. I'm happy to have you. Um, won't you please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and what you do? Good morning, everybody, and um, thank you for tuning into this episode. It's um, been a great honor and pleasure to be here with Ingor, and my name is Reggie Waterman. Um, I'm a person, I'm a man, um, human. In terms of what I do, um, you know, I'm a director of product marketing at a software company. Mm -hmm. I'm a founder of my own personal branding agency that um, does workshops for universities and colleges to give them the, the skills that they need to succeed post-graduation. So I pretty much tell the students what's not found in a textbook. And that means like how to network effectively, 
how to deal with a bad boss because there's a lot of bad bosses out there, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, how to deal with politics and so forth. I'm also a published author. Um, I released a book on in, in back in 2021 called Discover Your Other Self. It's now available on Amazon and it's about personal development and growth. And there is a copy, Angor has a copy. Appreciate the support, Angor. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Um, and yeah, speaker, I do that too. I just um, finished up a, a keynote speech this week um, back in Toronto this week at Centennial College. And then I'll be going back to um, Costa Rica where I've just recently migrated to. And yes, it's cold right now and I can't wait to get back into the hot sun. You're spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. Um, let's say hello to people that are tuned in. Give me one sec. Wow. Hello, Forrest. Thank you for being here. He says, good morning. He's also an Ontarian. Nice mm -hmm. to have you here, Farah. Good morning, Forrest. And then we have Laura Morlando. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday to you. Uh, LinkedIn user, I'm sorry. Hola. I think this may be Daisy, but I'm not certain. Thank you for being here. And then we have my amazing friend. She's tuned in from central Wisconsin. Hello to you, Katie, manufacturing hype girl. Thank you for being here. She says, hello, everyone, and happy Good Friday. I like that name, by the way, Manufacturing Hype Girl. I'm already hyped already, just based on that name. Honestly, you haven't met her yet, and you're already hyped. She is amazing. Um, and also a previous guest on this show. So thank you, Katie. And we have Raven tuning in from South Africa. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, so, Reggie, <laughs> let's dive right in. Um, I showed a little bit about your book, and I want to tell you my favorite part of your book um, was actually the, the table of contents. Was the table of no, contents? It was the intro, actually. Um, the, the, the intro where you actually introduced the, the topic of discover your other self, and you said, discover your other self is a reflection of that moment when circumstances force you to uncover your resilient self. That hour when friends and family cannot do much for you other than to tell you things will get better. That moment when the universe seems to be working against you. That second when you can't understand why all of your endeavors seem to fuel your situation toward worse conditions. I know you can relate to that moment when you see all doors shut right in front of you and you get stuck in a dark and empty room with nothing and no one else to call on except for God. Whew. <laughs> After I read that, I just had to put the book down just for a second because, yes, I think we can all relate. Um, we can all relate to that. I'm getting emotional because I can so relate. Mm -hmm. But I will say, um, as somebody who believes in God and, and really is walking that faith journey, um, those moments are actually the moments when something big is coming. Mm -hmm. And the enemy can identify it. And that's why he's trying to thwart you from discovering your purpose, from seeing what it is that God has in store for you. Um I watched a video and a video interview of you um, speaking about this book. And I'd like you to share um, what inspired you. Can you tell people? I, I know. I know <laughs> about the whisper. But what inspired you to, to write this? Um, please go ahead. You know, and um, just again, I just want to reiterate um, my gratitude to you um, to support me on, you know, grabbing a copy of that book, um, Angora. And yeah, that that introduction came from the spirit, um, for sure, in terms of how that was written. Now, the inspiration behind the book is, is a good question. Essentially, I remember it like it was like yesterday, um, March 2020, just waking up um, from my slumber and then, you know, heading downstairs to do my, you know, daily routine. 
um, I walked downstairs and then all of a sudden I just felt like I heard this whisper. And I know everyone in the audience was like, what's this whisper? And what is, what is, what is this crazy guy talking about? Um, I thought I was going crazy at that moment. Um, but to me, it was um, God connecting with me. And just like you, I'm on the same journey as well in terms of, you know, spirituality. And that whisper said, connect with the people. At that point in time, I didn't know truly what that meant. Um, obviously, that's this is like when we're, you know, on the cusp of everything going on lockdown. And if everybody remembers that moment, everyone could probably remember where they were during that time, right? When the, when the news was breaking out and people were kind of scrambling, people were buying up toilet paper, all that, all that jazz, like that's just one example of many. But connecting with the people, I was so confused. I was like, how do I do this? Um, and I thought to myself, I was thinking and just meditating on, on that word. So ideas just started to flow, Ingor. And one idea was like, okay, maybe I could just like host a maybe a Zoom meeting with people and give them, you know, words of encouragement and inspiration. Because at the end of the day, we were all in this together in terms of, you know, suffering through the the anxiety, the uncertainty. And maybe this is God's way of me connecting with people. Didn't know what I was doing at all, Ingor. I even like, I remember creating like an event page on Eventbrite. And I just took the link from that. And I remember just creating a post. Does anybody want to, if anybody wants to join this group that I'm putting on, please join. And nobody signed up because a friend of mine goes, dude, you're in marketing. You know, like you have to just do like one-to-one -one outreach and people will come. Lo and behold, I oh. took on that advice. And my first Zoom meeting, 25 people showed up. I talked about my journey, how I hit rock bottom and just opened up the floor for other people to share and magical moments happened where i'd bring on guests they would talk about their their struggles with life just to provide inspiration mm. and all the week over week people so many people just started to come to these meetings and i was like yes there's an opportunity here where even during that introduction that i mentioned when you are put in a corner the lights are down anxiety is at its highest peak all you have is yourself. All you yeah. have is your connection with the spirit. And you have an opportunity to find your other self, that person inside you that's really screaming at you and saying, hey, I need to do this or do that, but I'm scared. Like what I loved about your intro video, and I'm sorry, I'm rambling on this, but I love this because you said, I hate video at the top of your intro video. Think about those moments in time. Like I used to hate video too. I hated, a lot, hated doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. but that fear, and you mentioned it, there's evil, there's spiritual warfare, there's, there's yes. darkness that prevent you from trying to be the person that you can show up to be in this world and who you're intended to be, mm -hmm. to make impact. But that's the inspiration behind the book. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's say hello to some friends. Dave Chrysler, he is the king of process. Um, thank you for being here, Dave. Nice to see you. And Forrest is asking, he says, when you can, please mention the book title again. It is Discover Your Other Self. I'm going to show it to you and I'll I'll also send you the link, Forrest, so you can see it. It's, it's on Amazon. Um, that's where I got it from. So I'll send it to you. Katie says, wow, so powerful. My husband also says that rock bottom is where God resides. He is our escape from the world. Wow. I love that. Love that. Yes. Um, Whitney says, good morning from Katy, Texas. Nice to see you, Whitney. And Robert Berry is waving Mr. at Mr. Robert Berry! <laughs> How you nice doing, sir? Thank you, Rob. Thank you for being here. Um, Katie says, wow, Reggie. I also had a powerfully present connection with the father. I still remember that feeling, life-changing, affirming. Yes. And of course, some networking happening in the comments, which I love to see. Um, but I want to ask you some more questions. And I uh, before I do that, actually, I want to share with you one of my favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. It's by Kevin Cruz. 
And he says, life is about making an impact, not an income. And I'm sharing this with you because I know you speak about impact a lot. And um, that's that's one of my biggest, biggest things that push me is just to strive to make impact. Um, so awesome. I um, Let me get to my question. So my well, question. I love, I love that quote, though, by the way. Can I, can I, Thank can you. I, can I respond to that in a quick? Yes, 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 please do. Life is about making an impact, and I'm just rip, just not an up. income, not an income. Mm -hmm. I love that. Why do I love that? Because we are all on this planet, believe it or not, to be connected with each other, to serve one another. Yes. Um, and that's 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 our purpose, right? There's another. There's but there's layers to this, right? I remember once someone, you know, an old VP of mine told me, mm -hmm. "The money will come." Yes. You gotta put in the work. Right? The money will come. But then when I think about that quote and I think about what's incoming. Yeah. The outpouring is our ability to show love, to show mm -hmm. compassion, mm -hmm. to make impact. And the income is the love that we get back in return. That's that's the value exchange. But over yeah. time. And if we're thinking about monetary gains, that will come eventually, yes. right? <laughs> but making an impact allows you to put yourself in places and spaces that allow you to connect with others. And it's through those connections that present new opportunities, new income opportunities. And again, we're not just talking about monetary, but there's something when you are able to make an impact you're able to impact your soul and another soul and another and it's that ripple effect so that's just how it goes bam <laughs> you know whenever i talk about that quote i always say i always add on this part um <clears throat> yes life is not a life is about making an impact not an income but the income will come if you strive for impact yes i love that too yeah yeah. Um, okay. So I want to be cognizant of your time. I'm just looking at the clock, right? Um, Actually, you know what? Like, because it's Good Friday and my my other meeting got canceled, we'll we'll just roll with it. That's my gift to you. Thank you. Um, that's awesome, and I'm sure that my audience, the audience, will really love that. Um, so this this show is called Inspiration from Anger, um, and we're talking about the power of networking. But I'd like to know. What is it that inspires you? Yeah, that's a good question. What inspired, I think what inspires me is my ability just to give back and impact others. My inspiration comes from the vibes and the connections that I'm able to establish. Like for example, migrating to, to Costa Rica, that was another whisper that I heard. There was another download, if you will. Mm. the inspiration for me comes from the unknown before I used to be so scared of it. Now I get excited. I remember people were like, well, aren't you scared just moving out there? Like you don't know anybody. That's the best part. I don't know anybody now, but I'll know other, I'll know people once I get there, I get situated. And that's, what's been happening. I've been integrating myself within the community and just the energy that I've been receiving and giving back is the inspiration that keeps me going. Wow. I love that. And and the fact that you did that without knowing anyone, mm -hmm. I will tell you, um, speaks loudly. It says um, you're comfortable being uncomfortable. That's good. Yes, and let me let me just paraphrase this. This wasn't always a thing for me, right? Yeah. It's 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 the growth. It's 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 like we've talked about. You have to be put in that you know that that pressure cooker mm -hmm. of life, and from that you'll be able to withstand. You know, it prepares you for the next stages of your life. So I'm at a point now where I can just go into a place of the unknown and be comfortable with it. Yes. Um, 
Okay, so I'm not gonna follow my natural progression of questions, but I wanted I wanted to touch on um, what you're speaking about in terms of the pressure cooker that you've you've been in, right? Mm -hmm. um, you said in your book you say that 2019 was your own version of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Um, can you share a little bit about that, please? Yeah, and that moment it was like that changed the course of my of my of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that day like it was yesterday. So it was January thirtieth, twenty nineteen. I remember getting off the train, and this is in Toronto, the Go Train. Get to Union Station, come out of Union Station, and you know you're walking towards the subway station because I went from the Go Train. Now I got to go underground, but to get underground, you have to come outside. I know, logistical thing. But I remember there being like this sea of people, you know, they're migrating from the go train to underground. And I'm like something, and again, whispers, take a picture of this moment. And I took a picture and it was a sea of people and it represented like the, the rat race. And I remember I'm like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? This rat race thing. It's like, we're all, we're all just kind of like going in the same motions, kind of just like cattle, it felt like, right? Yes. And um, I remember that morning I get to work and I got news that um, my position is null and void. So this is like, so this was a definite shock to the system. So they said that, you know, unfortunately um, we're gonna have to let you go. And this was the first time that I've ever been laid off in my career. So at that point in time, this was like 12 years in one particular industry. And I was pretty much on my own. I was like thinking, okay, well, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to support my kids? And, you know, as a single father paying child support on top of mortgage, it was a real strain on me. Um, so, that was my rock bottom moment. There was other intricate details into that situation where it impacted my ability to get a job in that industry, um, unfortunately. And because of that, it made it very difficult to just bounce back. But through that hard time, I remember just like getting so emotional. I was like, how, how am I gonna do this? I, my confidence was low, my self-esteem was low. Everything was just shot. Mm. And I just remember just constantly praying to God, praying to God, listening to, you know, motivational um, speeches on YouTube or watching them on YouTube. And the amazing thing that occurred during the process, because this was a few months, right, of, you know, getting rejection letters after rejection letter from trying to apply for a job. What I've discovered is that when you take a step back and you be still with yourself and you connect with God, ideas start flowing. I remember I got to a point where mm -hmm. it felt, I felt like a detective, like trying to solve like a crime. And what I mean by that is like, you know, like if you're watching a movie and the detectives have like, you know, pictures of multiple people and they got like the string, the drawstring, and it's like trying to connect. Yes. Make connection. I had that, I had like post-it notes all over my wall in terms of, affirmations in terms of these different goals in terms of all these different ideas and they were just splattered across my wall wow it was that moment that allowed me to really find my other self and find and uncover the gifts and talents that i never tapped into like from that from those moments i was able to develop this this program to support um you know the universities and colleges I was able to develop a, um, a, a tech um, tech requirement document for a for, for a web application that is going to transform and revolutionize the talent and acquisition strategy like process. Um, you know, from that, I was able to audition for commercials and TV. I was like, "What am I doing?" Like all these things started to pour out, um, but that's when the pressure was on. You know, you you got to go mm -hmm. through you gotta go through the mud. You got to go through the mud so that you could come out on top and realize that, hey, sometimes these, you know, you realize that these people did you a favor. Yes. Because if, if it wasn't for that moment, if it wasn't for that 
moment in time in my life, I wouldn't be a, here talking to you right now. I wouldn't have had a, a book to publish. I wouldn't have been impacting the youth because I would just be going on the same hamster wheel of, of life. And do we really want that for our entire life? No, no. But you needed to be interrupted. Yeah. Right? Um, I went through the same thing. I actually lost my job in 2018. Um, I was let go. And I remember, uh, I, I can't explain it, but I have a gift. Call it intuition, whatever you like. Um, I remember that day because I decided to take my lunch earlier and I was walking with a friend. We are just walking um, for exercise, just, you know, during lunch break. And my phone rang. So I said, oh, hold on, I need to answer it because it's it's my my colleague. So I answer the phone and she says, where are you? Um, the manager's looking for you. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm out on my lunch break, but I'll be back. I'll be, um, you know, I'm walking. And she says, oh, okay. But the sound of her voice just made me realize I needed to turn back. And I told I, I said, okay, bye. And I hung the phone up and I turned to my friend and I said, I have to go back. They're looking for me. And she says, why do you have to go back? It's your lunch break. I said, I don't know. I think they're going to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> and those words were out of my mouth before I knew what I was saying. I went back and lo and behold, I went into a room with my manager and there's an envelope in front of him with my name on it. Excuse me. Um, and you know, when you pour, when you pour yourself into what you do, it hurts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's something that it's inexplainable how you feel. I'm actually, wow. Um, <laughs> it's inexplainable. And when I went through that, I remember thinking to myself, like, really, like, what did I do to deserve this? But it wasn't anything of, of that I did, right? It was mm -hmm. just corporate restructuring affects people sometimes. And mm -hmm. I remember the next day I sent my ex-boss at that point an email and I said, how are you? And he replied, he's like, uh, geez, like how can you ask me how I am when you've faced this? And I said, well, you know, something that I realize is that we as people think we're in control, mm -hmm. but we're yeah. not. No. God is in control and he orchestrates all things. Um, and if you're a believer, he orchestrates things on your behalf. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And no, thank you for sharing that. Um, because yeah, your intuition will tell you and sure. give you that, 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 that trailer to like things that are on the horizon. Right. And yeah. I remember it's, it's funny that you said that it's like, it, you know, it's like going through that struggle or going through those moments is what God prepares you for your yeah. goodwill. And I remember mm -hmm. that same morning after I got the news, I went across the street to talk to a friend of mine. I said, man, I need to go for, for coffee. And I, I just need to like someone to talk to. And I remember he told me the same thing. He goes, listen, this is a good thing. He yeah. goes, God is going to show you who he truly is and what he could do for you. So just giddy up and hold on tight and oh just gosh. enjoy the ride. Yeah. And I was oh like, what? God. I'm like, I don't, here I am just, you know, thinking about all oh, bills. Oh, yeah. uh. <laughs> right? right. And I'm like, this is a good thing. <laughs> but he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. No, and we fail to see it when we're in the situation, but that's what happens. Um, let's just go to the comments quickly. I see it's yeah. going crazy. Oh, my word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, my. Okay. Laura says, I love that, Reggie. Impact equals incoming. That is a great perspective. Whew. Forrest is commenting for you. Could you read that for us, please? Reggie's uh, immigration story reminds me of my own to a large extent. Thanks, Forrest. I'm glad that, you know, it resonates with you. Yeah. And 
Boom, Marcello. <laughs> Hello. You know, it's it's so funny about Marcello. Um, you know, we're talking about the journey and just how like even Discover Your Other Self got started. When you take these these steps to do things that you've never done before, yeah. but with the intention that, you know, I'm gonna help other people build, you know, build a community, impact others. Speaking of God, God will put people in your path. And I remember I met a lady um on linkedin she was in new york and i said hey listen i've been doing these these little zoom meetups but how do i expand like how do i create greater reach and she's like do one of those linkedin lives and i'm like man how do i do that and she's like yo you gotta talk to marcello and then marcello like gave me that link to apply for linkedin live and again i still didn't know what i was doing but i remember this guy had the crispiest setup like he had he probably it, it, listen he remember this 4k there's 8k i think he had like a 16k camera i'm just exaggerating but my man just like really hooked me up so appreciate you marcello yeah he's, he is awesome and yes yeah, somebody else say hello oh that guy <laughs> that guy <laughs> <laughs> Usama! <laughs> that guy's like the energizer bunny yes right on steroids and that energizer bunny on steroids can rap yes he can it, oh my it. word i'm gonna i i need us there's a lot of comments guys so i'm just gonna try to skip over some of them but we're doing awesome both of us thank you for being here so nice to see you, your name on my screen, my brother, um, Osama. And let's see. <laughs> Daisy. Don't, Daisy was my guest on Wednesday um, for Wonder Women Wednesday. And she says, hola, everybody. Happy Friday. We made it. Woohoo! God is good. And she says hello to you, Reggie, and that she, it's nice to meet you. And my sister, thank you. Um, That's oh, a man. beautiful comment. Look at that. <laughs> yes. she, says, she says that you look beautiful this morning. <laughs> the glow of the Lord is over you. Amen. Hola, Daisy. Como estas? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, my sister. Oh, my word. Robert says, you can often tell when something is up. Robert. Don't say any more comments, brother. We need to hear your voice. He's got like the voice of like. God. I know. <laughs> I know. I think uh, Rob, there's, more, there's, have... more, there's Morgan Freeman and then there's Robert Berry. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, Whitney says work stuff cuts deep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our family is in the house. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you guys um, and just the camaraderie that you have with them. Um, these three guys are awesome. Usama says, sometimes it takes good things to fall apart for the better things to come together. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Katie is um, she relates to what we're saying. She says, I was unjustly fired from my previous employer and it was the best thing that happened to me. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Listen, you got you to gotta navigate all that stuff on the background. Even Forrest says he doesn't envy you. Right? I'm laughing at his comments right now. Um, okay. Laura says, I have a similar layoff story that I now say was my trajectory changing moment. As Steve Jobs says, we can only connect the dots looking backwards. In the moment of loss, we can't see the path. And it is okay. It will be revealed and we will be able to connect the dots looking backward. Yes, in retrospect, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. Rob, you are so right. He says, sometimes things don't fall apart. They fall together. Wow. That's deep. That's profound. It is. Um, so, Reggie, mm -hmm. 
Growing up, who was your role model and why? Besides the Ghostbusters? <laughs> yes, please. Who was my role model growing up? Um, geez. Besides <laughs> athletes like Michael Jordan, in terms of, you know, being being really young, Michael Jordan was one of my my role models. Um, but in terms of people within my, like, tight-knit circle, being family and friends, I would probably say, um, you know, my mom and my dad have been an inspiration and role models for me. Um, their work ethic really paved the way in terms of being exposed to their dedication and willingness to create a, a life for myself and my sister, you know? And um, I try to pay that same, you know, we talk about, you know, um, creating legacies um, or creating, um, what was it? Um, you know, creating wealth and so forth. But I'm always trying to be on that trajectory of just, you know, how do we create like a legacy of love, right? How do we show that to others? How do we demonstrate that to others? Um, so that's that's what I'm drawing. That's what I've been drawing from them, and doing, trying to do the impossible. Right. Wow, you're speaking my language. <laughs> you know, and I'm gonna say this. I always say it, um, but I'm gonna say it again. If you are in the comments and you're not connected to one another, um, you should do it because you will definitely um, connect heart to heart. These are um, people that really, that's how they connect. So please do that. Um, look who's here. Michael Paterano. Yes. What's up, Michael? Hey, Mike. Thank you for popping in. Um, nice to see you here on, on your name on my screen. Always. It's good to see him smiling. I like that. Yes. Wow. Michael has an amazing story too. <laughs> oh, I know. I, no, not not just stories. 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 Yes. Um, I think when I think about Michael, I even in this lifetime that he's lived, I feel like he's lived many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, such a good yes. spirit. <laughs> yes, he is. Who are you gonna is... call? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, wow. I love it. Uh, thank you, guys. You are making my day. I before we um, <laughs> before we went live, I told Ridge. I said, I know people usually come, but I'm not certain because it's it's Good Friday. But wow, you just warming my heart. Thank you, everyone. But it just shows you that you have a good community of people that surround you and are, good, are willing to support you. And growth. That, that this is it's a true I testament to like who you are. So. I love them, and I I know that they they love you too. Oh no, they're not here for me. They're here for you. <laughs> they <laughs> are. No, I, lo I love these guys and and ladies, so I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate the support. Uh, so I want to, um, you know, before I started doing any interviews or anything, like I was really reluctant to to begin doing video. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, somebody invited me to be on his show and it took me about two months to say yes. I said, every time you'd come back and say, I'm still thinking, I'm still thinking about it. Um, and, you know, because because I was so reluctant, he gave me his questions ahead of time. And one of the questions that he posed, that he, he put in his, um, in his message to me, I was stumped by the question mm -hmm. because I've always known who I am um, and I, I've known that what drives me is my love for people, right? His question was so good that I now ask it to my, to my guests. Um, and, and I'm going to hopes to stump them too? <laughs> no, because it was, it really made me think and it made me actually create this because he asked me, what is your life statement? Ooh, that's and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and I really had to think about it because 
I love, love, love people. That's that's just me. But mm -hmm. what is it that I want to be my mission for life, right? Because your life statement is something that will drive you. Um, so the one that I actually um, ended up building after he sent me this question was, my life statement is to positively impact the lives of others. Mm -hmm. So love what's it. yours? What's yours? No, I, I love this question. I know I love it because it's like my, my little tagline that I say is, you know, I constantly got to keep people in wonder. Yes. And my mission is to help people discover their other selves so that they could create wonder for mm. the people that they interact with. Mm. Um, so that's, that's pretty much my mission. So, you know, giving them the tools, the, you know, the inspiration that they need to create wonder in this world, because we all have it within us. It's, there's, there's a lot of things just holding us back, right? Um, a lot of fear, a lot of, you know, uncertainty, you know, and fear could be broken up in terms of like, fear of success, fear of failure. Um, but once you overcome those fears, again, it's all an illusion. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, uh, that would be my, um, my, my life statement in terms of my mission is to help people create wonder in this world. I love that. Um, and I've read this, I've read your tagline many times. Mm -hmm. And I've often thought to myself, so what does that wonder actually mean? Uh, is it uh, a mesmerizing feeling or a wandering thinking kind of a wonder, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's a play on words there um, and there is a pun intended probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, you know, cre creating that wonder is about it's always keeping people in that curious, you know, that curious state. Yes. It's always keeping them guessing. It's like, what's next? What's next to come? What's next to come? And I always say like, and probably Robert, Robert Barry, cause he's, he's tuning in can attest to this. I would always say, you know, I got something cooking cause I don't stop. It's always, it's always on to the next. Yeah. And I always hated just being in this box. And I would say that before. Um, and what I mean by the box is like that creative box, you know, when you work, um, and a lot of the companies that we work for, just like the average person, you're kind of put into this like zone, but you have the ability to break out of that because we're all given get different gifts and talents. Yeah. Well, how do we plan on using them? Yeah. And, you know, there's that sentiment sentiment of, you know, we, we all have one life. We all heard that before. Right. Yes. But what are you going to do with the time? Because we yes. can't get time back. Time is a currency. We know this. So create wonder. You have the ability. It's in you. You you know you're the director of your own movie and your reality. Yeah. And sometimes life does feel like a movie because sometimes it's full of twists and turns. There's you know ups and downs, you know climaxes and just gotta yeah. roll. With it. Yeah. Have wow. Fun, enjoy. Um, I have a question. Just in follow up to what you said. Um, did you find before you lost your job? Mm -hmm. Did you find that it was mostly getting up, going to work, coming home, getting up, going to work, coming home? Before those mad, was it was it just like that routine? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Before you lost your job, because mm -hmm. I know you said you know now you always have something cooking, but did you find that? Um, that was kind of an inspiration point. You know, as your friend said, you have to see giddy up now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like I was caught, caught up in the motions of life, that hamster wheel. So like you said, get get up, go to work, come, come home. home, watch a couple, you know, a couple hours of TV, yeah. go to sleep, rinse and repeat. Is that yeah. what I wanna do for the rest of my life? Is that what anybody wants to do? We've been programmed to do that. I get that. Like even the move to, to Costa Rica, I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I could wait till I retire, mm -hmm. maybe at 65, 
if 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 that's a possibility, we don't know. Listen, tomorrow is not promised to anybody. So I don't even know if I'm gonna make it to 65. Yeah. But why not now? Why not enjoy the time now? Why not enjoy that experience when I have all this energy at this age versus waiting till like I'm 70 or 75? And then what what happens a lot? People don't realize this. Some people, when they retire, and you may retire at 65 if you're, if you're fortunate, some yeah. people may pass away the following year at 66. So it's like, so you spent all this time working and not enjoying and that's it? No. There's yeah. more to life than this. Right? More to life. More to life. I actually, um, I have a very close example of that. A friend of mine, one of my close friends, um, her dad worked really hard. They had a family of with five kids. And he always worked really hard. He was a machinist, striving to, um, you know, provide for his family and then he retired they were planning a vacation um him and his wife were planning a vacation to go uh go visit back home because they're from trinidad and one sunday just went into the bathroom and he had a, had a heart attack right there and he died and i think he wasn't even 66 <sighs> Yeah, I think it was probably about a month to three months at the most since he had retired. Didn't he worked all his life? So you're right. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, and we need to seize, seize the day, carpe diem, seize the day, seize the moment, seize those moments that we have. You know, like that's that's a prime example. You know, like we never know when we're gonna go. It's like I was watch I was watching this one, these TikTok videos. Um, and it was like it was a voiceover video and it just ran you through like the cycles of of death. And I think that's something that we kind of have to just be cognizant of cognizant of because it's a reality. Yeah. But through that that voiceover, he mentioned about like this different stages, like, you know, the funeral will happen for you. And there will be people that come to the funeral, or there might be people that say, "Oh, sorry, I'm too, I'm too busy. I can't come to the funeral, right?" And then after that funeral, you know, your 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 children will have maybe a week or two if they're lucky um, in terms of bereavement. And through the stages, people are you know over over days, weeks, people are starting to forget about you. Mm. So as much time as we spend thinking about what other people think about us for making the choices and decisions that we have made just for ourselves, people will forget about you in an instant. So why not utilize the time that you have right now just to enjoy it? Right? right? Um, yeah. You know, I don't know if this is an affliction of people of color. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain that that is the case, but um, I grew up in in a household and in a culture where people always thought about what up, you know, in Afrikaans they say, what can you mean to say? Mm -hmm. So what are people gonna say, <laughs> right? And and what are people going to think about you? And I know this, but a few weeks ago I had Bilyana, Bilyana Georgieva. She's um, she's a coach, a TEDx coach, and she she said the the one thing that has helped her to succeed in life is knowing this. What other people think of you is none of your business none of your business yes i remember les brown said the same thing yep yeah it's none of your business um awesome i want to i want to ask you a little bit about networking mm -hmm. but um 
can you tell us a little bit about, for those people that are in and around Toronto, um, tell us what's coming next month, please. Yes. So, like I mentioned, I always got something cooking. And I was thinking about this for a little bit, but, you know, we think about what traditional networking is. Traditional networking and, and Ingor, let's, 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 let's dive into the, tra the, the process. Yeah. Hi, my name is Reggie. What's your name? Ingor. Oh, nice to meet you, Ingor. What do you do? Uh, I'm a connection catalyst. What about you? Oh, I do product marketing. I'm also an author. I'm also a speaker. Uh, Here's my business card. We should connect. Mm. We should connect. But well, what what happens? We never connect. Or, hey, I, is there anything I can do to help you? Mm. Sounds nice. But in reality, it doesn't really oh. happen that often. So mm. I want to create an environment um, and platform that, and I don't want to call it like a, a tradition, like a networking event. I just want to, it's, a, it's an event that's based on community. It's based on a value exchange. Um, so I call it the next 10. And the next 10 represents what the next 10 years of your life is going to look like. It's going to be comprised of people that are innovative, they're creative, um, they high performers. So it's not gonna be for everybody and this 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 event or group is not for everybody, I get it, because we all have different paths that we have to walk, but mm -hmm. it's gonna be for people that really and truly want to serve one another. Some of you might say, well, is this a mastermind? I don't want to call it a mastermind because what I want to do essentially is like, imagine, let's say 25 people show up to these, this event, and I'm going to do this every 90 days for those 25 people. I want to split them up into five teams of five and imagine Ingor, you're part of my team of five. Um, I wanted to really and truly understand, well, what do you want to accomplish in the next 10, 10 years of your life? And you're like, well, I really want to grow a business. Okay, what does the business look like? And how can I truly help? And what I mean by that, it's not just about asking the question, but it's actually about taking the actions to help you. So through the course, so in between each event, we are going to set up times to actually meet and connect. And I'm going to help you with your business. But you're also going to be invested in my business because I have aspirations and dreams that I want to fulfill too. So you're going to exchange value in terms of how you could help me. And that's how they, that exchange goes back and forth. So from one event to the next event and in between those times, you're going to work together as a group of five on how to help each other. And at the next event, we're going to come together as a collective group and we're going to put our progress on display so that we could actually talk about it and showcase and demonstrate the results from that exchange. Because it's about keeping the momentum going. It's not about, well, I'm just gonna have one conversation and that's it. Cause that's what just usually happens. And again, if we wanna say that we wanna make impact then we gotta make real impact by taking action together. So that's what this event is all about. And also it'll be, you know, integrated with a, a, a few different experiences because I like to do things different. I don't want to just do the business card like handout. That's not what that's not what this is about. This is about making real life impact and putting it on display. I love that. Um, so on Instagram, uh, when you put in your name, one of the top posts that come up mm -hmm. is a quote that I, that just, when I saw it, I, it just stood out to me. And it says, stop hanging around people who don't want you to win. <sighs> yes. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, we do that. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. But we need to be supportive of one another. We need to 
not just um, network to be connected to each other, but really connect. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that I'm I'm really I'm striving to be cognizant of. It's it's it is impossible if you think about having thousands of connections, um, but I would like to try. I'd like yeah. to. Try. It's it's true. It's and it's it's unfortunate that, like you said, not everybody in your circle will want you to win. Unfortunately, it's sad. Um, it truly is because you know I sometimes I feel that way too. Like that's just a reality. Like let's just call a spade a spade. I maybe you have people in your circle. I know I got people in my circle. Same thing. Yep. What I find interesting is that strangers people that don't even know you are a lot more supportive than people in your circle and that's just how it goes yeah. and i think you know i don't think it's necessarily about you um what i think it is about is probably that it holds a mirror up to them and you know for them it's like you you're doing this what about me Yes, you're. I you are absolutely right. And there's a reflection of them, because that's what it always comes back to. Because I think to themselves, like, "Wow, how's how's Ingor doing this? Why is she doing this?" But it's because they're like, they they're not brave and they don't have the courage like you do, right? And maybe they care about what other people think about them. So about them, right? So. Yes. It's truly a reflection. It is. Of their, um, of their shortcomings, of their shortcomings. Right? And But I always say this, and it's an African proverb. It says, don't compare yourself to others. The sun and the moon shine when it's daytime. I love that. And isn't it that, it's just that simple and impractical? Right, it's so simple that you think like, no, this is too sim simple, right? But it's true. Like, we can, we need to celebrate one another. When something is happening for you, I need to be able to say to be there and celebrate you. Just like I would like you to do the same for me when it's happening for me. No, exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's wrap up. I just want to go to the comments quickly and then. Um, we can wrap this conversation up. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I have to laugh because Robert was saying, here comes the question, Richard. <laughs> and Usama says, wow, that's deep. Forrest loves, he says, my life statement is damn near verbatim with his awesome and Daisy says she loves your life statement, Reggie. Thank you, Daisy. Oh, Robert. Rob says, we have one mic and one life. Let your voice be heard. Yeah. Uh, wow. Mike says... Rob, Rob's always coming up with the, the deepest sayings. Yes. And Mike says, it forced you to stop thinking when that happened, when you lost your job. Um, Fire says, may I add this thought, as one who is over 60, the desire to impact never diminishes. I think it's a drug. <laughs> yes. I love, oh that. I love that. I love that. Keep it going, Forrest. And Forrest also says, he says, it's brilliant, the next 10. Thank you. Thank you, Forrest. Appreciate it. And follow, I put the handle for Instagram in the comments. So for nice. anybody that wants to join the community, I just started the Instagram Thank this you. past weekend. So we're just building it up. Thank you. Uh, Laura says, great concept. And Daisy says, yes, very true. And this is the handle on Instagram. If you'd like to go and follow it um, and join the community, please do. And if you're in and around Toronto, please come and be there. I, I don't care what's going on in my life at that on that day. I will be there. Um, I'm looking forward to it, Reggie. And just being able to learn and build community. Um, I think 
you know, I want to tell you that a few days ago, somebody actually created, they made a post and I knew this guy lived in Toronto, but mm-hmm. guess what? He doesn't anymore. And he spoke about how he finds that in large cities, they lack a sense of community. Mm-hmm. And that was his experience in Toronto. And that's why he and his family have moved out. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to recreate that. We need to remember that no man is an island and that we are all here to um, link hands and lift each other up. So thank you, Reggie, for being here, for being my guest, for being so open with us and sharing your journey. Um, it was an honor and a privilege to be able to interview you today. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your platform and your community with me. Um, everyone has been great so thank you all for supporting Ingor um, appreciate you for all for making the time especially on Good Friday and it's you know made a weekend be a true blessing for you all thank you yes and please share with us where can people find you where can they connect with you um, if they'd like to do that yeah so um, connect with me on LinkedIn for sure um, also connect with me on Instagram uh, at Reggie.Waterman so that's at Reggie.Waterman as well as follow at next10.life. And if you haven't yet, get the book. (laughs) Honestly, even the intro impacted me. So thank you, Reggie, for writing something so um, impactful. Thank you. you. Be blessed, everyone. Um, Reggie, I'll send you to the green room. I will just wrap up and I'll be with you shortly. Thank you, everyone. If you're still watching, um, thank you for being here. Thank you for spending this time with us. Know that I appreciate you, and I know Reggie does too. I'm wishing you a wonderful Good Friday to those who celebrate, and a happy Easter, and um, a good weekend to those who don't. Um, I will see you back here next week, Friday, for another episode of Inspiration from Anger. Take care. Be blessed. See you next week.